So, um, I'm supposed to be talking about faith today, which is a very interesting topic. But I'll, I'll start first by telling you that my dad was a drama instructor at Eastern Washington University, and my mom was a music teacher. And so that kind of shaped who I am. And can you hear? Can everyone hear? Okay, because I tend to talk low when I'm talking about stuff. Okay. So that kind of helped shape me in my formative years. But the Lord has always been with me. And even though my family was not very religious, and my mom played the organ in church, but she only went to church when she was being paid. <laughs> Go figure. Um, I really didn't get a very good Christian education. And so I kind of tended to drift after I got into college. And of course, college was all about women's rights and um, being yourself and you can have it all. You can have a job and you can have children and you can be married. You can do all this stuff. And that's not exactly true. But I kind of had bought into all of those concepts and all of those freedoms that were being offered at that time. Uh, and then I met my husband. Now, I'd gone out with quite a few other different people over the years, and God had always whispered in my ear, not the one. <laughs> I was like, darn, okay, and we, we, I'd move on. And when I met Joe, um, I was a secretary in his department at Keytronic, and I picked on him mercilessly, but he, he got over it. <laughs> And we started dating, and within two weeks of dating, he got that whisper, she's the one. And two weeks after that, God said, he's the one. We were both terrified. <laughs> we hadn't known each other that long, and yet God had spoken to us and said, this is a person that I want you to um, be married to for, forever, for your life. And that was just so nice to know that God was the one that was doing this and that it wasn't our decision, it was God's decision. And I started learning about how faith works and what God does. And in doing so, I stopped working full-time at Keytronic and I was praying to God about what I would do, should I work part-time? Were we gonna have kids? Did I need to look at a new career? What, what was I gonna do? And the Lord whispered a date in my ear, and he said, March 6th. And I said, what does that have to do with anything? I wanna know, am I gonna have kids, yes or no? And should I continue working full-time? March 6th. Okay, so I went with that. And nine years later, I was in church, and the sermon was about how Abraham and Sarah had a child in their old age. And I thought, is he talking to me? And... I went and got, had a pregnancy test, and I was pregnant. We'd been married 12 years. And I went to the doctor, and he said, well, your due date is March 4th. And I said, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be March 6th, and you better be there. So... That was another thing where God had intervened on my behalf. And God always keeps his promises. And those nine long years that I waited was really difficult because 
I kept thinking, well, maybe my sister's going to die in a car crash and I'm going to inherit her children because nothing's, yeah, this is, this is a tough, long wait. And then the Lord surprised me with Rachel. And that was even better to have two. So it's nice that the Lord continues to bless me and continues to speak to me. So one night I was sleeping and my cat walked over me and he stepped on a tumor in my breast. It was like, ow, what's wrong with you? And that's when I, how I found out that, that I had cancer. I had a biopsy and after I had the biopsy, I went to Luther Haven so that I could do five days of crafting at Luther Haven, which was really fun. And I got back and found out that it was cancer, and we started that journey of cancer. But I knew that God was with me, and that he knew it was going on, and that he was going to get me through this. By that time, I developed a pretty good sense that I could pretty much make a humorous situation out of just about anything, which I did with cancer. And my kids helped me along with that. Oh, well, they put their heads down. She going to tell that story? <laughs> <laughs> but they got me, uh, they got me a breast-shaped stress ball. <laughs> <laughs> they made me breast jello. And we just had a good time with it. I mean, I, it was like, well, we're gonna ha I'm going to have cancer. I'm going to go through chemo. I might as well have fun. So we did. My hair started coming out, and we had a buzz cut party. Why not? Now, some people ask me, uh, didn't you ever think, why me? And I said, no, I didn't, because I learned that we are all wretched sinners, and we all deserve death. So why not me? But at the same time, one of my favorite parts of the Bible is Hebrews chapter 12. And it talks about the discipline of the Lord. And that the Lord disciplines those whom he loves. And it's for our certain good. And because of that, I said, I'm just going to go along with the program here. And they got the cancer out, and I recovered, and things were going really great. Now, at that time, I was also working um, in Bible study fellowship as a children's leader. And every week that we went, we had some crisis or other. Someone had called in sick. We didn't have enough volunteers to work with the kids. We weren't sure how we were going to do this. And we would get on our knees and we would pray about it. And every single time, the Lord came through. We had people that said, combine our classes and we will give the Bible story together. And that worked. Or they made a request for more volunteers and we were inundated with volunteers. And the third one, which we thought was kind of funny, was that sometimes God provided strategic absences among the children <laughs> so that the class went a little bit better. <laughs> but it worked. And so what I learned from that is that we can trust God with the outcome because week after week, we trusted God with the outcome, and he was there for us. So I use that same kind of a theory in working through this whole cancer thing. In the meantime, after the cancer, I started having sciatica down one leg. And I was sleeping upright in my living room for quite a few nights, and it was very, very difficult for me, and I kept hoping that that would uh, subside after I got my knee replaced. Yeah, it wasn't my knee, it wasn't my gait, there was something else going on. So I went to the doctors and I begged them to do surgery and they were very reluctant, which 
was difficult to deal with. And that was really the only time that I said, why? I'm so much pain, why? Well, we took Rachel over to Bellingham where she's going to school. And while I, I took a shower and while I was putting on deodorant, I hit a speed bump in my armpit. And I went, oh my goodness. And the cancer was back. Now the good news is that when I went into treatment, the first thing they do when they give you an infusion is they put a whole bunch of different things in there. But one of them is steroids. And every time I went in for treatment, they gave me steroids. And the steroids stopped the inflammation in my back and in that herniated disc that was driving me crazy. And I could sleep in my own bed all night before I could kind of sleep in my bed, but in a one fixed position. But God fixed it for me. I was so, so grateful. Now, another thing that happened before I started treatment was I went out to Luther Haven again, and I had my own um, cut, crop, and quilt five days at camp because everything was shut down. And one of the things that I like to do when I'm there is I like to go walk on the beach and I go out beyond where the other houses are because Luther, Luther Haven doesn't have a natural beach. So I walk out on the rocks and I pick up beach glass and I look for um, Indian artifacts of any kind. Sometimes I find stuff, sometimes I don't, but it's kind of fun. One time I got to walk with this year old deer along he was walking on a path, I was on the beach, and we walked together down there, and he was eating leaves, and it was just like, oh, I have someone with me. So this year, I thought, you know, I always walk down this way on the beach. I'm going to walk down that way today. So I started walking down that way, and it's just big baseball-sized rocks all over. I mean, there's no, no sand at all. But I'm walking along, and I'm walking along. <sighs> And as I'm thinking about, this is going to happen again, and I have cancer again. I'm a little bit nervous about it, but I trust you, Lord. And as I was walking, in between the rocks, all these big, giant basalt rocks all over, I saw something. And it was just an edge. And I looked at the edge, and it was beveled. It had been worked by someone. And as soon as I saw it, I sat down because I couldn't believe it. And I said, Lord, really? I pulled it out and I found this arrowhead that was wedged between two rocks. All I could see was that edge. And I sat down again and I started to cry. And God spoke to me and he said, out of all the rocks on this beach, if I can lead you to find this incredible, exquisite piece of art, not you, <laughs> then, <laughs> then I, if I can do this for you, I can take care of your cancer. That's right. And it was like, oh, yes. And the fact that I had learned to trust God with the outcome, I could just let it go. I mean, it's taken me 60 plus years to just let it go. But if you can trust God with the outcome and let him handle it, then you can stop all the worrying and what ifs and on and on and on, because he's got it covered. He told me he's got it covered. And if you are seeking and if you are listening, God can give you that same comfort. And most of the time, we're not listening. Most of the time when God speaks to me, it's right before I fall asleep because I've emptied my mind of all the other things. But God is real. He's there. He wants to help you. He wants to walk with you. But we need to pay closer attention and see where he is working and join him. So the things I've learned through this journey is that God leads me where he needs me, 
which is, I thought, wow, that's really great. Great. And the other thing is that I will ne let nothing steal my joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And just like how I didn't write anything down for this talk, I said, the Lord will give you the words when you need them. And that is what he has done for me tonight. And I thank you very much for listening.